In this video, we're going to see common source stage of a MOSFET with current source load. So literally, we'll take a current source as load in this video. This is how the circuit diagram would look, where I've taken a current source here whose DC current value is I1. And in fact, it's a DC current source. And in DC analysis, obviously, the current flowing through the MOSFET M1 should be equal to I1. I1 should be equal to mu C ox W by L times VGS minus VTH whole square over 2. So we have to choose the DC VGS voltage in such a way that the MOSFET allows I1 current to flow through it. If you consider the channel length modulation, obviously we'll get a term 1 plus lambda times VDS multiplied to this current equation. This VDS is nothing but the output. So we are talking about DC analysis here. So these quantities are all DC values. When we look at AC analysis, all DC sources should be made zero, which means VDD zero and I1 zero. So what happens is in small signal analysis, we are left with the MOS transistor and the channel length modulation effect represented with R01 and the output is taken here. As we made the I10 which means the current source should be open, hence we are not having any of that circuitry shown here. Due to the input voltage change, we have Gm times Vgs here, Vgs is equal to V in, hence the output voltage V out will be equal to minus Gm times V in times R01. In fact, we should say this is Gm1 as we are saying it is R01. So the voltage gain, which is V out or V in, which is equal to minus Gm1 times R01. Now this result is very interesting because if we had a load resistor Rd, we would have a gain of minus Gm1 times R01 in parallel with Rd. Obviously, R01 in parallel with Rd, the resultant would be close to the smallest resistance out of R01 and Rd. We know usually that R01 will be really big value in mega ohms or so, depending on how much is the channel length modulation effect in the MOSFET. So when we use a constant current source as load, the voltage gain is really whatever the MOSFET can actually offer. That's a maximum voltage gain that you can get out of a MOSFET. Any other load that you put is only going to reduce or to the maximum, it will actually bring it to this maximum value that we are seeing here. When we use a resistive load, if you want the resistance to be very high, to get very good gain, obviously we are limited by how much DC current can be chosen. I'm going to directly show that the transconductance is going to be this and the output resistance is going to be R01. This will be R, R out. But in reality, we are not going to have a constant current source like that, which takes any kind of voltage across it, but keeps giving the same current value. But to some extent, we can use a MOSFET. Let's say as we are going to be on the top side, we'll take a PMOS where it is biased with VB voltage. And let's say we make sure that M2 is in saturation region. Obviously, the current voltage characteristics of PMOS for a fixed VGS are going to be like this, where this we are taking it as VDSP and this is IDP, where this value is VGSP minus VTP. Obviously, the references we have taken are like this because this is drain, this is plus, this is minus, this is VDSP. In saturation region, the amount of current that it actually allows to flow is going to be constant. And now if we connect this to this NMOS, which we are calling M1, which should also be in saturation region and take output here. So we are using the PMOS here to be a current source. So as practically we can use a PMOS transistor and make sure it is in saturation region so that it works as a current source. The current flowing through the PMOS should be equal to the current flowing through NMOS. And if you look at the output voltage, given the condition that M1 and M2 should be in saturation region, obviously V out should be greater than 
VGS minus VT of transistor 1. So VGS 1 minus VT 1 and V out should be less than VDD minus magnitude of VDSP. We know that VDSP magnitude should be greater than magnitude of VGSP minus magnitude of VTP. So this will be the output voltage range within which the both the MOS transistors will be working in the expected region of operation. Now let's look at the small signal analysis. Input is going to have a small signal applied which is AC but the VGS here of a PMOS transistor is going to be a fixed value which is VB minus VDD. So hence there is no change in the VGS in small signal analysis. So hence GM times VGS for MOS transistor M2 is going to be zero. Hence we don't have to consider the transconductance of that transistor. We have to take the output resistance of the MOS transistor M2. Hence we are going to draw the equivalent circuit for small signal analysis by making VDD equal to zero and having the resistance R02 and the MOS transistor 1 and its channel length modulation effect modeled as a resistance R01. Now this is our input which is equal to VGS of this transistor M1 and the current that it draws will be equal to GN times VGS1 and we take the output voltage here. Now this GM times VGS1 current is actually coming from both the sides this side as well as this side making it positive on this side negative here positive negative here so the output voltage V out will be equal to minus GM1 times VGS1 times R01 in parallel with R02 so we can say the voltage gain so we can say the voltage gain of this stage is minus GM1 times R01 in parallel with R02. So from this we can directly say that the overall transconductance of this stage is capital GM and the overall output resistance is R out which is R01 in parallel with R02. So we see a difference compared to a ideal current source where R02 was not there but when we introduce a PMOS as current source it has an output resistance of R0. So even if you take R01 and R02 are equal so the parallel combination of it is going to be half. So which means the voltage gain compared to the ideal current source versus this has become half. In later stages we will see how to make sure the output resistance of the PMOS that we have here becomes even higher. We'll talk about that in cascode stage where the output resistance becomes really high where we don't have to actually sacrifice so much of gain or even output resistance. If you like the video, please give a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe and thank you for watching.